I actually don't really have a question, I just have a comment, a, a point to support uh, this no to rate. Um, I, I come from the health perspective and although we don't have any like hard evidence, but I've ever heard from social worker friends that there are women who know their husbands are having affairs or visiting prostitutes outside, but because they believe um, it's their responsibility to have sex with their husbands, they continue to do so. And I think um, this, what statistics show is that a lot of STIs and in fact, like 90% of the HIV cases, um, the female cases, they were actually infected by their husbands and they were actually faithful wives. So I, I think that, that kind of backs it up. And um, I think a lot of women actually believe they have to have sex with their husbands. And as educators, it's very hard to tell these women that, hey, you actually have a right to say no, especially if you know your health is in danger. But um, if the law is telling you that, hey, it is your responsibility, it's going to be very hard. So I think with this kind of laws in place, it would actually back up our uh, case as educators. We, we have that legitimacy to tell them, yes, the law backs you up and you do have the right to actually say no and protect your own health. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Hi, hello everybody. My name is Akan. I've got uh, three points to share with you. The first, I think, is just uh, following your points. Actually, if you, uh, some people just mentioned that if some women they don't want to speak up, they don't want to speak out, then what like uh, any effectiveness of this law? What I should say, think this way: if you are raped, abused, sexually abused by your husband, and then you know the law just showed that actually, if you speak up, that's nothing. Okay, it's useless. So. What for if you speak up? Speak to who? Who will help you? The law will not help you, right? So which means the first thing is not, not to argue that uh, will somebody speak up or not. You have to do is you have to provide this kind of channel, uh, provide protected by the law, that's the first step, okay. So secondly, um, I would like to ask you, have you read the petition of no to read? Okay, I'm happy to try to uh, translate from English into Chinese version. And according to the petition, actually, uh, what they want to do, if I'm right, okay, they are not want to change the code mentioned here, but delete it, okay. With those additional, uh, like, uh, uh, in a marriage is okay, whatever. They just want to simply say, uh, if a man sexually abuse violent women, put the penis to the vagina, without uh, it's a non-consensus right situation, that's called rape. So under this situation, whatever it's in the marriage, uh, without the marriage, that's called rape. And uh, have to be sent to the court and be punished. Okay, that's the uh, second one I would like to share with you. But this also brings to my third point, which is actually I uh, I totally support what Paige's and uh, Julian's group, what you are doing. That's very important and very brave to do that. And as a woman, I'm like, it's very good to protect me, right? Very good. But the thing is, if you just use this sentence to um, argue or like to delete or change the law, whatever, I think people will challenge and argue. Why should the law only protect women? If we say there's no gender bias, everybody is the same, everybody share the same right and we are all equal right in the law. So why you only protect women, not men? We just do not discuss can a woman rape the man or whatever. But like theoretically, we can, if we want to say, we want to reflect the basis is like everybody is equal, so which means we, we don't have gender bias, which means like a human being, maybe you could modify it as like if one or maybe worse, uh, some people, they sexually violent, uh, penetrate the other one or the other people, and then this kind of action is called rape or it's called like against the law. So this include all men or women or include all like inside or outside the marriage. Will this be more acceptable for all the people in the society or will be this more pervasive uh, for you to persuade the MPs or people in the parliament? So uh, 
I mean, this is just a question for you to consider joining uh, PhD's team. Thank you very much. Excellent question. Thank you. Jolene? Um, right. Uh, uh, I think the time is running quite short, but I'll try to answer that and I'll try to be as clear as possible because I don't think I was very clear earlier. Um, when the Note 8 team started looking at this, we were very concerned that all kinds of acts where someone penetrates a second person and that second person does not consent, that that should be treated the same way. So we looked at the laws, we saw that there is an offensive rape which deals with um, a man using his penis to penetrate a woman's vagina when the woman does not consent. That is the marital rape exemption. Then we looked at the next section, assault by sexual penetration, which we discussed, um, which carries the same penalties. And although we do think there is a question outstanding about whether it should also be called rape rather than being given a less stigmatic name, um, we thought that for the moment that's less important, that's a less important question than whether it's generally equivalent. So this um, section, which is like rape in terms of its penalties, it covers any person using either their penis or any other part of their body to non-consensually penetrate someone else's uh, orifice of any kind. And also someone using their penis to non-consensually penetrate someone's mouth. So actually, in terms of the act where the offender is non-consensually penetrating the victim, everything is already covered. The only exception is marital rape. And when I say everything is covered, I mean man on woman, woman on man, man on man, woman on woman, it's all covered. So the, the only magical exception is for this one act. Um, and I also think that's a point worth thinking about for all the people who are concerned about false accusations and about determining consent, because um, already, the law and the authorities must consider these questions in the case of all these other acts, which, by the way, include, for example, using your hand to penetrate the vagina of someone who does not consent. So that act is not covered by immunity, but using your penis is. So I think that's worth considering. But in terms of a further question here, which is, um, should the law remove gender bias by also recognizing that and again, I apologize for how graphic this is, but covering the penis of someone who does not consent should also be treated as rape. Um, I think that there are definite problems here because um, at the moment, the law recognizes that for um, a man doing that to another man, but it's a bit problematic in terms of what it recognizes for a woman doing that to a man. We chose to focus on the first set of acts where the offender is penetrating the victim rather than the other set of acts, because we think um, th there is a question mark over whether that first set of acts is worse because your body is being invaded. But definitely it's open to discussion and obviously if male victims report feeling really, really violated in the same measure um, by the other set of acts, like, we would obviously consider that something that requires serious attention. Um, I don't think we would pretend in any way that our campaign is comprehensive we just think it's addressing one thing that's really important and much more needs to follow, both in terms of other responses to that one act and the entirety of the law. Sorry, that was really long. Okay, I think we have time for just one 